Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss late code question 1372 that says longest zigzag path in the binary tree. So here you are given the root of the binary tree and you need to find the longest length of a zigzag path. So now what is a zigzag path? So let's say you choose any node in a binary tree. Okay, you choose any node in a binary tree and then you move to in any one of the direction either right or left. So if you choose right then uh, move towards the right child of the current node otherwise move towards the left chain. Now for the next time change the direction from right to left or from left to right. So if you have taken the right chain then uh, for the next uh, node take the left chain and vice versa. So yeah that's this way you have to travel in a zigzag manner of a, for a given binary tree and you need to return the maximum length of a zigzag path that you can travel. Okay and the maximum length is number of nodes travel in the path minus one. So this is the length. So let's take a look at the given example for better understanding. So guys uh, here, so guys here if you take a look in this example, so one path can be this. This is also zigzag path, but this zigzag path is of length 2. So another zigzag path is this, this, this and this. So this zigzag path is of length 3. Okay, one, another zigzag path is there from here to here. This is of length 2, right? And is there anything possible? So yeah, these are, these are some of the zigzag paths that are possible and from that this one starting from this node and ending here. So this is the longest of a length 3. So yeah guys, that's why we written 3 as our answer. Got it? Now if you take a look at the second example, uh, starting from this node, this node, uh, one path possible that is already drawn here. This is of length 4. Another, let's say, uh, if, you, if you start from mm, this node, so then this is one path possible. Yeah, correct. Uh, this is also one path possible. This is of length 2, this is of length 2. But the longest is only this of length 4. So yeah guys, that's why we written 4 as our answer. And here uh, there is only one node. So uh, we written 0 as our answer. So guys, uh, I hope you understood that what is a zigzag path for any given tree like this. So guys, for any given tree like this, what are the different paths that are possible? So let me show you. One zigzag path possible is, see, this is one zigzag path possible, right? This is zigzag. Another zigzag path possible is this complete is one zigzag path, right? This is one zigzag path possible. Then this is one zigzag path possible of length one, right? Uh, this is another zigzag path possible. So yeah, there are different zigzag path possible. And from that, which we will choose this zigzag path. This is our answer, right? This complete path is our answer. So guys, here, how we how we will check whether uh, whether the given whether the taken path is zigzag or not? So how we will uh, conclude to a path that is a maximum length? So for that we need to traverse traverse all the nodes, right? All nodes. Now guys, if you see that we will start from any one node and uh, take a zigzag path towards the bottom. So we will start from any one node and move towards the bottom. So that is move moving towards bottom so that is what when we move towards the bottom then that travels the technique we use is known as dfs that is depth first search right so we move towards the bottom in a in a depth manner in a zigzag manner but uh, we are moving towards the bottom so yeah we will use dfs here clear till here now the another thing here is we have choices right we have choices either to move left or to move right so since we have choices we can write uh, a recursive solution that will cover uh, to cover all choices, right? We we can write recursive solution to cover all choices. See, DFS is nothing but recursion only. So this is nothing but recursion. The only thing in this recursion we have to take care of choices that we will cover all the choices. What are the choices? The choices is uh, to move both left and right from each of the node, right? So yeah, we will traverse all the nodes. Since we have to move towards the bottom of the tree, we will use DFS and then we have to take care of all the choices. Keep only these three things in mind and let's code for the solution, right? The coding part is very much simple. It is more likely the DFS, DFS code only that we will write with a slight variation. So uh, what another thing we have to take care of after this to make sure we travel in zigzag M and R to make sure we travel in zigzag so we have to make sure uh, that we travel in zigzag manner. So for that we will keep one direction uh, uh, variable. So we will keep direction variable, right? So with the help of direction variable, 
we will maintain that uh, either we are traveling in zigzag manner or not that will help us to travel in a zigzag manner so guys clear till here this is only uh, four points these are simple four points that we we'll keep in mind while coding for the solution okay so now let's move on to the coding part right uh, let me take big, this tree again so let's now take a look at here so here this is our given function log is zigzag that we have to code so from that function i called the solve function or you can say dfs function twice one for, from for, for passing the root and passing true so what is true so here i have one variable left direction so if this is true then we will move in the left direction and if this is false then we move in the right direction so yeah we will cover both the test cases moving towards the left and moving towards the right so yeah that's why i call the solve function twice and initial i have this global variable max length that will store the maximum length and we will return that maximum length at the end now here i am taking three parameters one the node itself second the left direction or not and third the current path steps or the uh, number of steps taken in the current path okay now uh, uh, what is this let me show you so if if the left direction is true that means we have to move in the left direction right if the left for this we have to move in the left direction so for that i what i did is node of left move towards the left direction and then pass false right for the zigzag one this we have moved towards the left now we have to move towards the right so we have passed false and increment the current path step to one with one now from the same node we can also move towards the right right this is one another choice so if you are move towards the right then the next step must be left direction so we pass true and the current path step would work so here we are restarting our path so that's why i passed one okay so let us take a look with this example so let's say here we are having a root we have passed the root node left direction is true and current path step is zero so let's trace this let's trace this so so here we are move, we will move in the left direction right so here from this node we will jump here uh, left direction is true so we move towards the left uh, and then pass false and current step is one so here after uh, coming till here this current step will become one okay 0 plus 1 it is 1 so now the from this same node we can also move towards the right right we can also move towards the right so since we have moved towards the right we can take we have to take next step as a left so we pass this parameter as true and then 1 so here from this direction what we move towards the right right and we pass uh, as a true and uh, the length is 1 right okay now here we have two nodes in our recursion stack so let's take this node first so from this node since we have taken the left direction next node uh, direction we have to take is the right so we move towards the right and here our current step value will become 2 and from for this node there is nothing on the left so here it is null so stop so whenever you uh, there is no node or the null we return okay so yeah one is the answer on here now we have only this node in the recursive stack right so from here you move towards the left this value becomes 3 and also you move towards the right the value becomes 4 okay and after that uh, there is none so we didn't did anything right so guys from here since we are traversing in zigzag direction we move towards the right but there was also one point that we have added that we can restart right we can restart by taking this value as one current step as one so from here we have restarted there is one other option that we have restarted and value from here will become one right that is one traversal and so after reaching this we can also reach this so this value becomes two so that's why see the initial path we can continue but after that for each node we can also restart by taking one new path right we can restart by taking a new path so that's why this step here so this is the step for restart and this is one step for restart so that's why we that's how we are restarting the value and we can take the make take the path right zigzag path so for that we have added this line to restart the new path from that node so i hope you guys now clear this see once uh, if we have to move towards the left direction so we will continue from the top and move towards the left or move towards the right as per this value also along with that we can restart a new path from the given node so yeah for that we move towards a new direction and we restart and same here we move towards some one new direction and restart our path and yeah before uh, this calculation we have this maximum length where we will store the maximum length comma current path steps so yeah guys the code is very much simple it is nothing but a dfs but with a slight change that every time what we are taking we are taking the current path that we are uh, following and we are starting a new path current path and a new path so uh, that's how we will cover all the different choices possible right and at the end we return the maximum length 
So yeah guys, that's all for this video. Now talking about the time and space complexity. The time complexity here would be uh, big O of n plus n, n is the number of nodes. Why two times of n? Because we are calling this solve function twice. So yeah, twice time of n and the space complexity is also uh, nothing but uh, recursive stack that we will use. So that will be also n plus n uh, in a worst case. So you can see n plus n here for the space complexity. So yeah guys, that's all for this video. If you guys have any doubt, then do let me know in the comment section. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.